Hey, what's up guys? I'm Emmanuel. I am in charge of all the shipping and packaging at the Sam James Roaster and Warehouse. And today Sam's gonna teach me how to use the espresso machine. Greetings. I'm here today with my buddy Emmanuel and we're gonna show him how to dial in a, an espresso shop. We're gonna be brewing our butter knife espresso. This is our house espresso at all the shops. Uh, we have it in the retail size. We also have it in the bulk size and the espresso machine that we'd use in the coffee shop. Each of these is called a porta filter and the size of this basket is what determines basically your entire espresso recipe. Uh, this one holds 18 grams, so it's sort of like a, like a large double shot. Uh, those just slap in like that. Uh, they're easy to clean like this. This is how I recommend you clean them throughout the day uh, to avoid any sort of oil buildup and gunk on there. This is what the ears of the portafilter lock into to create a tight seal. And if we get underneath and look, you can see where the, uh, the water cascades from. So this is pressurized water that's flowing through like a shower screen. And it should dispense the exact same volume of water each time. And the function of programming that is really about having an espresso recipe. And that's the, kind of the main focus of what we're gonna talk about today is how to maintain an espresso recipe so that you can pull the exact same shot every single time. We're gonna do the espresso that we do in store at SJCB shops, uh, and that's going to be an 18 gram double espresso. We need to understand how the grinder works in tandem with that volume of water. And this control panel has a number of functions. However, I should state that with espresso grinders, it's, it's set to an amount of time. It's not set to an amount of volume. So currently it's grinding for 3.15 seconds. Um, the amount of coffee that it dispenses in 3.15 seconds we're gonna to have to wait to see what it is. Uh, and then we're gonna make an adjustment if necessary. So to see how much coffee we're dispensing, we're gonna set it to zero. We're gonna hit the double button, let it grind. And it's simply just lining it up underneath the chute where the coffee falls. I'm gently just clicking the doser. And you can move this around slightly just to, to fill it in. Yeah, what you wanna avoid is like low spots where there's no coffee. You should see something like this, where it's as evenly dispersed as possible, but you'll always see a peak in the center. And we have 20.2 grams of coffee. This tool right here is what we use to actually remove the excess grinds while grooming the surface of the coffee bed to allow for the water to flow through it evenly. I do this with the same technique every single time so that I can maintain the same result every time. I'm also very cautious not to like, rattle this too much. So if you like settle this down or rattle it, all this loose coffee is actually going to settle in and that's going to increase the weight, which is going to give us something different from what we're intending. Mm -hmm. So I start at the top and I pull with the shallow side of the scraper towards myself and then away from myself. And then I do two angled ones to make sure that I'm filling any voids in the surface. And then the final one goes off. So that's one, two, three, four, and then off. Mm -hmm. And you also create a, uh, a preferred path for the water. You want the water to go through the middle of the puck. You mm -hmm. don't want it to go around the perimeter. So if you leave the peak, the densest part is always in the center. Right. And the water is going to go around the dense part. So you want it to sort of prefer the opposite of that. And we're going to weigh the results. After grooming, we're left with 18.1. And the way you want to hold this portafilter, mm -hmm. similar with the high elbow. So you want to create like a... You want to turn yourself into a drill press. And then something I always like to do before I tamp using this is just a slight tap. You'll see that it sort of settled down a little bit and that's just air and like uh, small pockets of air in the bed being compressed. When I tamp, uh, I'm really just trying to make a flat, even surface. And I use my fingers around the edges as a guide. If I feel a lump in any side, that tells me that it's high or low and then you can correct that before you actually lock into the espresso machine. Give it a slight polish and then just gently remove. I always like to dust off all the coffee grinds on the ears there. You can always check too to see this like ridge line in here. Oh, that's underneath it? Yeah. Evenly? You also want to be below that ridge. So that ridge mm -hmm. basically represents where the shower screen is going to meet the puck. Okay. So if you're below it, you're not going to scrape the surface right. of the shower head. This process should be pretty gentle. The risk if you're too rough with it is that you can crack the puck here 
and any cracks or uh, weak spots in this puck are going to be the spot where the water wants to go through. Mm -hmm. uh, the water wants to go because it's pressurized. It wants to go through the path of least resistance. And so if you can make the path as even as possible by eliminating those weak spots, you're actually going to have a much better chance of going a, a nicer shot. That includes locking in too. Um, you don't want to go through all that work and then smash it into this rest machine. Right. So you'll see, I'm using this button right now. This button is a programmed flush button. That basically preheats the group head before we lock in, and it removes any debris that might be sitting on the, on the screen surface. Use your right hand, yeah. And then your left hand to finish it. So it's right hand to lock, left hand to finish. Oh, okay. Gently, I like to use a warm espresso cup. It's nice if they're on top of the machine. Then for just JCB cup. When I'm making espresso, you always want to use a handle if a cup has one. Let the handle face out this way so you're not fishing around for it on the back. And then we just press the button. What we want to do now is get under here and take a look at how the shot looks. I always make sure when I'm making espresso in the shop that I'm monitoring the way that the shot actually looks. Because if right. it's not a shot I would drink, then like I'm not going to serve it to somebody that's paid for it. Mm -hmm. So it'll always start in a nice like dark color. Uh, this is all the like the first stuff that's washing off the surface of the grinds. And then you'll see a, it's going to get paler and paler as the shot progresses. You can tell a lot about the quality of the extraction by the way that it's flowing from the bottom. If it were running in a bunch of like uh, separate streams around the perimeter, you could safely say that the perimeter of the puck was weak and that's where the path of least resistance is. My preferred uh, recipe for brewing 18 gram double shots of espresso is that I like to see the time closer to 30 seconds. I think it gives us a little bit more extraction time so that we can increase the sweetness, we can increase the balance of it. Okay. So 26 second shot. It's nice, but it's sour. Like, um, like the initial taste I get is brightness. Right. I don't want that to be uh, the lingering taste as well. Like, Brightness should be right up front, and then it should open up all the rest of the flavor. If it maintains just a bright flavor mm -hmm. constantly, then uh, there's not enough sweetness to balance it. That's right. like lemonade with no sugar, right? just lemon juice. So we want more extraction time. It's going to give us more sweetness. We'll make that more balanced. Or are you ready for my next one? He's up. You're going to drink a bunch <laughs> of So let's try another one, but um, I'm going to make an adjustment here so that we can restrict the flow we're not going to adjust this. I like the water flow. I like the water volume. Um, but what I want to do is I want to adjust the grind coarseness. Okay. Uh, so as we make our grind finer, uh, it's going to create more resistance against the flow of the water. So same amount of water, same amount of coffee, but we're going to make the grind fine enough that the water has a harder time flowing through it until we get closer to the 30 second mark. I think that's going to increase the sweetness and make it a little bit more of a balanced espresso. Okay, so to adjust the grind, I don't want to change the amount of time that it's uh, grinding for quite yet. I actually just want to adjust the, um, the grind coarseness. And so the way that this works is there's two sets of teeth in a grinder, um, and they're a certain distance apart from one another. The coarser you make it, the further apart they get. The finer you make it, the closer together they get. And that creates a finer particle or a coarser particle. So to do that, we're going to adjust this, uh, this wheel on the side here. Mm -hmm. So if we want coarser, we'd go that way, but we want finer, so we're going to go this way. And now we're going to have to purge out a, bit, a little bit of coffee from the grinder because what's in the chute right here is still the old grind. Right. Uh, and so if we use that in conjunction with the new grind, we're going to get a misleading uh, result because it's not going to be actually all the new grind setting. Mm -hmm. It's obviously, it's wasteful to do so, but uh, if you don't do this, then every coffee you pull is wasteful uh, because it's not as good as it could be. Good point. Um, so once you've got all the old grind setting out of there, turn the grinder back on. We're going to use the manual purge. And you'll see once it starts to homogenize at the end of the chute here, you're safe. So we're going to dump all this out, but I'm going to get you to do it because I want you to get the feel of okay. the dresser. The best way to do this is to keep your elbow high and kind of pull it towards yourself. Okay. Making sure that you do a full click and then let it recoil on its own with the spring. Okay. Just one forward and let it pull back. One okay. forward, let it pull back. So your stance again, like the skateboard. Right. This will help you kind of keep that arm in line. 
so that you're not like chicken winging. Right, I see. The risk is uh, when you work too fast with this thing, the less and less you get. Well, nothing's coming out yeah. because if it doesn't do a full recoil, it doesn't reset the spring. And you'll see that the wheel, like it spins now. Oh, it's not even. It's not moving. moving. So we purged all the old grind out. Um, now we're going to pull a new shot of the finer grind. Um, I haven't changed any of the time, but we're going to weigh it first. Because okay. if it's weighing less than it weighed at a coarser grind setting, um, we're gonna have to make an adjustment again, and that'll be a slight adjustment in time so that it's still dispensing the right amount of coffee. The only change will be that the grind has become finer. Looks similar to the last one. Mm -hmm. But it's less coffee. And the reason for that is we closed the door. Right. As you close the door in the same amount of time, less can pass through but let's scrape it and see what we're left with. If we are well shy of 18, then we're gonna increase the weight again, um, just by increasing the time. So you'll see, it's slightly less now. Mm -hmm. And in 3.15 seconds, it's not giving us enough coffee. So we're gonna increase the amount of time, which should increase the yield of coffee. So that each time we push this button, it's dispensing for 3.2 seconds now. Okay. It appears to be a little bit more and it's right back to where it was last time. So we'll do our scrape again. And after removing, we are back to just shy of 18 grams. Perfect. So, so it's the same amount of coffee as last time, it's just a finer grind setting, which should help slow down the flow of the espresso. This just illustrates have these small adjustments can get you the results you're looking for if you know what adjustment to make. And we're gonna tamp this one, make sure it's level. Let's watch the results. Okay, you'll notice immediately the flow rate is slower. It's a really nice looking shot. Yeah. You can see it's gonna start converging to the center pretty soon in a single stream. There we go. Look at the striping on it too. Yeah. And then something to keep an eye on as well is the time that it flows for. Would you look at that? The color is beautiful. Mm -hmm. You can see like striations and marking and spotting. That's what you want to see. I always like to give it a little swirl. And you'll see it has a really nice like glossy kind of texture to it as well. This is an effect of like, um, it's still fresh coffee, but it's actually been rested for uh, about 10 days. Rested coffee has a silkier mouthfeel to it. It's less gassy, less bubbly, um, and it doesn't dissipate as quickly. Get you to try this. Thank you. And just let me know what you think compared to the last shots, like mm -hmm. the sour one. Oh yeah, I see what you're saying. Right? Yeah. Like it has acidity in the beginning, but it vanishes quickly and becomes sweet. It becomes yeah. balanced, all the peanut butter flavor, the jam, mm -hmm. that starts to become much more obvious. Uh, and that's what you're looking for, is yeah. like obvious flavor. You could chase your tail dialing in shots all day long yeah. to try to get the perfect like 30 second espresso. When shots that are in a range of say 29 to 32 seconds, they might all taste like, it, you might not be able to taste the difference between them at all, mm -hmm. but um, what you really want to avoid is like wild swings, you know, from 26 to 36. Right. If your shots are swinging between 28 and 32 seconds, it's a pretty small window mm -hmm. where they're all going to taste pretty good. If you get one shot that flows outside of the range, instead of adjusting everything, pull another one. Right. Make sure. Because if they all pull at 29 after that, you didn't need to make an adjustment. Right. It just makes me like, uh, like respect baristas even more. Like. I've never had a bad coffee at like your shops and they just pull it right off. Like, well, a lot goes into it, right? Yeah, like, uh, for sure. You know, they got to get there at 630 in the morning. They've got to dial the grinder in, uh, ideally within like under five minutes. Wow. And because they've also got to make drip coffee, they have to display all the pastry. Yeah. They've got to set up the condiment station. There's so much that goes into opening the shop that this process has to be so second nature mm -hmm. that uh, 
that you can almost leave it to the end and just be like, that's how I'm just gonna like, I'm gonna open the door. Right. Dial in as I'm opening. Um, Interesting. But, uh, and this process also happens throughout the day too, right? Mm -hmm. Because like environmental changes are gonna happen in the cafe. Uh, humidity is gonna change. Temperature is gonna change. The batch of coffee you're using might be from a different roast date. And so there may be slight differences in like CO2 right. levels that'll change. So you're constantly refining and fine tuning, but you have to start with the baseline of where it should be. Mm -hmm. And then you can just sort of like make micro adjustments from that rather than having wild swings constantly. You can use a spoon, you can try to get it as close to 18 as possible. Yeah. The reality is in a coffee shop, some shots are gonna be 17.8, some are gonna be 18.2, and some shot times are gonna be 29 and some are gonna be 32. Uh, but as long as you're within that range where you know it's good, and you're not experiencing massive like spikes or swings from like 17 grams to 19 grams, you can expect uh, the results that you're looking for. But treating it like it has a consistent recipe is uh, is the first like state of mind you have to get into. It's like cherry juice, but coffee. <laughs> Well, yeah, it's right. good. Like the acidity is not even noticeable. Mm -hmm. It's there almost, not almost as like a liveliness. Yeah. Like it just tastes fresh, but the balance is incredible. Pretty good. That's butter knife. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>